Hi, I'm Dr. Mitchell Roslin, Chief of Bariatric Surgery at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York, and this is Dr. Gene Kaplan, Chief of Surgery of the North Shore Long Island Jewish Healthcare System. Today, um, Dr. Kaplan and I would like to talk to you about all of your options for bariatric surgery. Many patients believe that their only choices are gastric bypass or lap band. Uh, however, uh, I think today that there are a lot more choices for patients that are contemplating bariatric surgery. Gene? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. The uh, uh, options include uh, uh, malabsorptive procedures and restricting procedures. You'll see some of the uh, latest uh, techno technological advances in uh, bariatric surgery. Uh, we, we've been discussing uh, for the last uh, few years what the long-term follow-up in these patients uh, has been, and this has led to more uh, research in the area of uh, physiologic consequence of bariatric surgery. As a result, one of the things that we'd really like to talk to you about are the differences between operations such as the sleeve gastrectomy, the duodenal switch, and gastric bypass, uh, as well as the lap band. What you're looking at in the background is a laparoscopic duodenal switch, and what we have seen over the last 10 years is that duodenal switch operations have the highest weight loss and the lowest relapse, relapse rate. And for many years that was considered uh, to be due to the fact that the operation, as Dr. Kappa said, was malabsorptive and patients had to go to uh, the bathroom a significant amount of times. We've actually modified that operation uh, and um, do a version of that where we don't do a very, very distal bypass and our patients ha have no increased amount of bowel movements. It's very, very similar to gastric bypass, yet we see higher weight loss. The other advantage is it's now done minimally invasively, which uh, in the early experience this was an open operation and it wasn't offered as a, uh, a laparoscopic or minimally invasive approach and, and with the techniques available today and the skill of surgeons such as yourself, the uh, laparoscopic approach has been uh, applied to this as well. And so I think, well, what we want to talk about is what some of the differences are between potentially a laparoscopic duodenal switch and a laparoscopic gastric bypass. Uh, I think the first thing is what is a duodenal switch. A duodenal switch is an operation where we make a small pouch similar to a bypass, but instead of making the pouch short and just with the top of the stomach, we kind of tubularize the stomach and we preserve the valve that's at the end of the stomach called the pyloric valve. Yeah, I think that's the uh, key difference is there is a mechanism here. The anatomy is relatively similar to normal anatomy as opposed to dividing the stomach completely and leaving a connection which is in some uh, uh, what is experience a non-physiologic uh, uh, connection? Well, we really became interested in this when we began to get a lot of complaints from our patients, and both of our experience with gastric bypass goes back uh, to the late 1990s, early 2000s. So by the time 2005 and 2006 came around, we had a lot of graduates. And what we were very impressed by was the similarity in their history when they came back asking us, can you make us the same way as we used to be? Yes, I think that's uh, an important uh, uh, point. But, uh, you know, the, the patients uh, that have been revised now, and I think that's the, the key issue, is looking for long-term follow-up, uh, want a more durable procedure, and I, I think that's where the, the various options have to be discussed with the patients at length. So what we do when we do a duodenal switch is we make this small tubularized pouch, which is really the first portion of the sleeve gastrectomy. And then instead of doing the bypass at the very top of the stomach, what we do is we do the bypass in the first portion of the intestine called, called the duodenum underneath the pyloric valve. And then we go ahead and do the intestinal bypass operation. Um, and with that approach, we see weight loss that approaches about 85% of excess weight. And as opposed to gastric bypass, between the first and third year, we continue to see weight loss. Right. I think that's the uh, that's one con you know, important aspect is weight loss, also the physiologic uh, effect of uh, uh, diabetes resolution, or at least uh, hyperglycemia resolving, 
the comorbidities such as hypertension and hyperlipidemia resolving. And, and again, this is the, the true reason uh, medically we're, we're doing these operations to alleviate some of the, uh, the difficulties that patients will have with those uh, metabolic problems. And in all of our research, the resolution of those comorbidities is higher in the duodenal switch than it is in the gastric bypass. Um, one of the concerns that people have had with duodenal switch is the degree of malabsorption in micronutrient deficiencies. And now, um, more than five years into our experience, we've found that those rates are very similar to what we see in gastric bypass, certainly not, not increased. So what, what is the difference in the uh, length of the uh, bypass segment in, in your operation versus this, what I would call the standard duodenal switch? Well, the standard duodenal switch left a common channel that varied between 75 and 100 centimeters. And when we do any intestinal bypass, we have three limbs of intestine. We have the alimentary limb or the limb where food travels. We have the limb where only bile and pancreatic juices go. It's not exposed to food, and we call that the biliopancreatic limb. And finally, the end of the Y or the Y segment, the bottom of the Y, is where those two things mix. And uh, a lot of people were using numbers between 50 and 100. We do a minimum of 125 centimeters, and on smaller patients, 150 centimeters, and never less than 100 centimeters. So it's almost 50% more in some patients than the traditional duodenal switch. And we make our pouch small, like similar to a sleeve or a gastric bypass. And with that, most of our patients go to the bathroom one to three times a day. We have no patients that complain of, that, that I know of, that have had frequent oily bowel movements or uncontrollable bowel movements. And again, what has driven us to this is the fact that we've seen many of the gastric bypass patients come back with intermeal hunger, where they eat something and two hours later they feel lightheaded and hungry again. And we find that patients who have their pyloric valve can maintain fullness for, for several hours longer. So we've really become impressed that the long-term results are better. The operation is slightly more complex, but I think it's important to patients to understand that there is a lot more in bariatric surgery today than just bands and bypass. I agree. Well, the reason we wanted to have this sh short segment is to provide a degree of education about the amount of options that exist for patients that are contemplating bariatric surgery. Many times people have referred to gastric bypass as being a gold standard, and gastric bypass is the most common operation. It's an operation that has improved many people's uh, lives, and uh, they've been very satisfied with their weight loss. But there are many of us that are in um, the field of bariatric surgery that always try to look at what we're doing uh, now and see if we can make it better. And one of the things that we've come to believe is that future versions of bariatric surgery will preserve the pyloric valve, which is a important structure that controls the release of food from the stomach. And as a result, um, we've spent a lot of time investigating these operations. And there are now three operations that uh, people are performing that preserve the pyloric valve, the sleeve gastrectomy, the duodenal switch, and now a newer operation called gastric plication, uh, which is being investigated. And we believe the future of bariatric surgery will be these operations. And at the highest end, with an operation that will have the highest weight loss, as well as the highest resolution of comorbidities, will be the duodenal switch operation, uh, where we combine an intestinal uh, bypass with one of these operations that preserve the pyloric valve.